Good evening, everybody. Sue Enquist, former softball coach at UCLA. I want to say thank you to each and every one of you for spending the evening with us. I am super excited about tonight and our special guest. But first, I got to say thanks to our Graduate School of Education and Information Studies, also in partnership with our UCLA Transformative Coaching and Leadership Academy and our own UCLA Athletics. Tonight, our special guest, our brand new leader in athletics, our director of athletics, Martin Jarman. Hello there. How, you How doing? are you, my How friend? You doing? It's great to see you. Good to see you too. Greetings. And from you know Boston. what? <laughs> yes, exactly. I want to tell all of our Bruin family and our listeners out there that Martin's coming to us from his home base. He's still on the East Coast. So, Martin, first of all, thank you for just staying up. I know that you're working 18 hour days and uh, it means a lot to all of us that you're going to take some time and, and share. But before we get into it, I just want to just hit some high points along the way for those uh, that are listening that may not know a lot about you. I think uh, just knowing that we have a former student athlete that played basketball, uh, he was a captain, played for UNC Wilmington, uh, went on, graduated, got his master's, and then went on to this trajectory through uh, Big Ten, uh, going to, you were at Michigan State, uh, worked in, as an assistant AD there, uh, nailed it in the fundraising game, and, and you also built this reputation around being an influencer, right? Like then you went on to Ohio State, did great work there. And then right now at Boston, um, you know what? I think one of the things that's most impressive and the sport industry certainly thinks a lot of you, right? You, I think you were named two time um, most talented 40 under 40 with Sports Business Journal um, and all of these great things that you've had, Martin. I think what I'm so excited about having you in the Bruin family is how you are just values driven man and how important your family is and that always comes first. So thank you tonight for being with us and I look forward to our conversation. Thanks for having me. This is, a, this is an honor to, uh, to do this with you, Coach, because uh, as you know, uh, my, my interview, and, and, and Bruin Nation doesn't know this, my interview at UCLA started, started about you. I told a story about seeing you, Coach, and watching the, the movie uh, uh, In Between the White Lines. And, uh, just learned so much watching that movie as a young puppy at Michigan State, uh, watching you do your thing and uh, watching that team. And uh, that was that documentary kind of kind of sold me on UCLA. So you actually sold me years ago. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but I get points off that I never you sent me a note and I never wrote back. So points off for me. I owe you. I owe you lots of up downs. That's right. True story. I, I said after I watched the documentary, I sent coach a note saying, wow. I don't know you, but that was awesome. I love your leadership. And I waited by the, the, the mailbox like for months and I never heard back from you, you know? So, so, uh, so yeah, thanks. Thanks for getting back to me. I was very impressed. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, do I owe you big time. Well, first of all, on behalf of everybody on campus, uh, we want to say thank you too and welcome. Um, tonight is really about you the man, I hope that our Bruin family can get to know you as um, a man and, and how much pride you take in the values that you carry every day. I want to talk a little bit about your upbringing. Tell me about the values that your parents bestowed upon you and you live every day. Yeah, uh, my parents are, are my rock and uh, you know everything that I am, I've gotten from them. Um, just uh, integrity, doing it the right way. There's no shortcuts. Um, it's just the work. Uh, see it through, grit, uh, just uh, perseverance, uh, belief, believe in yourself, uh, and toughness. Uh, you know, my, my, uh, my mom and dad, um, they're, they're caring and loving, and, and uh, there's no one tougher uh, than my mom was. And uh, so I, I've gotten so much from them, and I'm just blessed to be able to have uh, both of them in my life uh, for, for a very long time. 
Yes. And, and uh, you are on my heart with your new angel, with your mom. So uh, we'll always have her on our heart and know that uh, you're in our thoughts and our prayers always. You know, Martin, you. We're, in a time, we're in a time when uh, there's great change going on. I can't think of a better person to come into this leadership position and start to get our entire, not just UCLA, but our entire sport industry comfortable around this idea of how we're blurring the lines of athletics and sport. Talk to us a little bit about that challenge that you're gonna have as our AD and also that message that we need to get out there in society. You know, we're in an interesting time, uh, not only uh, in our profession in college athletics, but in, in our country and our world right now as we all um, endure this, this pandemic and this crisis. Uh, but particularly with college athletics, I think we're at a pivotal moment uh, and, and you see a lot happening right now, uh, and a lot of it is spurred by what's happening in the world, you know, and uh, social unrest, social justice, um, equality, uh, just different things that are, that are coming to the table, to the forefront. And uh, the, the one thing I can tell you is I don't know what the future holds. Um, I, I don't know that, but what I can tell you is we're going to do everything we can to be leaders and be at the forefront at UCLA and our athletics program. Uh, that's something I'm very confident in. Uh, you know, our mission is to provide an environment that our student athletes can thrive, um, not just survive, but thrive, um, and give them the platform, the ability, and the tools uh, to go out when they leave Westwood to not only change their communities, but change the world. That's who we are. That's the history. Um, and I take that very seriously. And so uh, what I can tell you is during these troubled times, because these are troubled times right now. We're, we're, in the, we're in the choppy waters right now. And as we navigate uh, through these times, I, I do know that we will get to the other side. Uh, and UCLA is gonna be a leader in that. And, and our student athletes are leaders and, and uh, that's the expectation. And, and uh, I, think, I think our alumni and our fans hopefully understand that uh, nothing less than that would be satisfactory to me. And I think we, all of us that have never experienced this idea of coming in to a very storied program, we have a great legacy, we have great success, we pride ourselves on our humility and our excellence. Uh, we're, all, we're all products of Papa Wooden. Um, <laughs> share, with me, share with me what you have learned. Um, for our listeners, he's, he's only been our boss for 30 days, so, um, but tell, tell us what, you realize, like just 30 days in, what are you realizing? Uh, well, coming in, uh, you know, my vision uh, of UCLA is elite. And, and I mean that, and it's not, you know, people get confused. Elite is not always winning championships. I mean, that's the expectation here. Make no mistake. We want to win and win big. Uh, but elite is a mindset. Elite is the way you, you do your business every day. Um, the way you challenge yourself, the way you hold each other accountable. Everything is elite. Uh, and that's what our expectation is. And so in my first 30 days, uh, it's been very rewarding to hear from people about um, UCLA being elite and why it's so special. You know, that's one thing I've asked people is, why did you come here? Or, or why do you support UCLA? What's it about? And um, I've just learned so much. I can tell you, you talk about Papa Wooden. I, I haven't heard Papa Wooden before. I've heard Coach Wooden. But, but uh, you know, my first, I'm doing an MJ Listens tour where uh, people can write in and say, hey, you know, whether it's a group of friends or whether it's some alums or uh, students and, and say, hey, I, I want to talk and I have something to share. I'm, I'm going to try to get to as many as I can. Uh, but it's really cool. It's a listening tour. And uh, my, my first one was with a group of student athletes and uh, freshmen, sophomore, juniors. And I asked them, I said, tell me what made you choose UCLA? And there was a freshman rower who talked about Coach Wooden and the values and, and how her parents and how she came up rooting for UCLA because of what Coach meant to UCLA and the value system that he had. And then we had a softball player too, I think she was a junior, uh, talk about the impact of Coach on her decision to come to UCLA. So one of the first things I learned was I thought coach was really just the basketball world and, and UCLA. But what I realized is um, his legacy impacts 
everyone. And that is, that is a resource. Obviously, I know that that is cherished, but I didn't realize the impact it has on incoming students. You know, that's significant. And that just goes to show um, the history and how it's appreciated and how it's loved. And we got to build on that. And I'm excited about that. Not everywhere has that kind of history. Not everywhere has the, the pyramid. Not everyone has the, the Bruin bubble. Like, those are things that we can build on. I mean, this weekend, I talked to our, our um, Heisman Trophy winner in uh, 67, Gary, had a great conversation. And he talked to me less about football and more about how he came to UCLA and how it's so great and how it's just a wonderful place to be. And that's, that's what I'm excited about because we can sell that because it's all about recruiting talent and developing young people to help them reach their potential. That's it, you know, and, and uh, I'm excited about that opportunity. And I, and I think, well said, and I think also the coaches do such an incredible job of recruiting families that understand the values, the character that drives your process. I, I remember you, uh, I heard an interview where you had mentioned that word elite and you wanted to make it really clear that we're not saying we're a superior entity. We're saying that it's a lifestyle, that elite mm -hmm. means everywhere. You mentioned it before. You know, the way you do things is a lifestyle. And to get people and recruit people and families that fit that, because when you make a commitment to come to UCLA, right, there's a very small margin for error. You get on that academic side of campus and you are competing against the best academic people in the country and in the world. When you talk about athletics and, and I remember when we were in the interview, you were talking about athletics and, and academic campus need to become one more. And that our student athletes, our student athletes are a wonderful ambassador to the campus. Talk a little bit about how you feel about the campus and all the rich talent that we have on campus as well and how we can kind of mold these together even more than we currently do. You know, that's the beauty of being at UCLA. There's, there's so much talent on campus uh, in the different academic units and, and not just the students, but the faculty. You know, I'm constantly thinking about how can we tap into those resources? I, I'll give you an example today. I had a conversation about name, image, and likeness uh, with some students and I was thinking about you know, who on campus, I'm sure that we have faculty um, that are experts in brand awareness and brand management. And wouldn't it be cool to have a partnership uh, with campus and, and bring people in to help our young people understand even before a decision is made on name, image, and likeness to, to really ramp up our education efforts to help our young people understand what all they need to know about building and maintaining and, and amplifying your brand and your voice. You know, we talk about giving a platform to students to, to speak their mind and to grow. You know, why wouldn't we help them take it a step further and, and really amplify their brand and their message and their voice? And, and I was thinking about, I wasn't thinking about going to go hire someone outside. I was thinking, I know we've got experts on campus. Uh, I know that just from some of the people that have already reached out to me. So that's, that's really exciting. But, but it's got to be like this. You know, I, I, I say um, we could do great things like this, if we're like this, we got no chance. You know, you gotta be like this. And, and that starts with the, the campus and the core because that's the mission. You know, we serve at the pleasure. We're an ancillary unit. Athletics is an ancillary unit and we support the mission of the institution. And, and that will never change. Uh, and so it's important to me to have our student athletes be ingrained on campus, have those opportunities to experience life outside of training and working out all the time um, and really have that interaction and that connection and that engagement because that fulfills, that's fulfilling for their, their enrichment and their experience at UCLA. It's going to make them love it that much more and have a great experience. You know, and I just love hearing that I know our Bruin family out there will too because, you know, what we're trying to do in our transformational uh, coach academy is to really build out this whole concept that the student athlete is shooting for mastery. They're, that's what their ultimate goal is. And if we can get them to shoot for individual mastery, understand the mechanics of team cohesion, no one play, no one tournament will ever be bigger than them. And they can really reach that ultimate peace of mind. And the, you know, peace of mind was Papa's, the apex of the pyramid. 
competitive greatness, right, was to be your best when your best is needed. But the one thing he said about to value more than anything was really understanding true peace of mind. And I know today when we talk about peace of mind, COVID-19, the yeah. challenges that you have as the athletic director, talk about how you draw on your athletic experience as a student athlete, where if you're in athletics competing, you have to be the master of the unknown. How do you draw those skills from when you were competing and using them now in this whole world every week? There's so much unknown. You can't predict the future. Tell me what you draw on as a former basketball player. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm big into self-talk. Uh, I think the race is always against yourself. You know, when you wake up in the morning, what are you going to do? You're going you're gonna to put those gym shoes on. You're going to get a run in, get a workout in. Uh, you're going to take that time to meditate. You're going to hit the snooze button. When you wake up, um, you're in a, a, a competition with yourself. You know, that's really what it comes down to. And so you have to be self-driven and motivated to be your best. And it starts from the moment you wake up every day, rinse and repeat. So that's one of the things I learned playing basketball, as you know, um, you got to bring it every day because you're with people that are talented, that, that competition brings out the best in all of us. But I really try to, to really hold on to, I'm competing with myself, you know, and, and I expect higher out of me than, than anyone's going to expect out of me. And, and so it starts with yourself and just how you self govern and how you, how you self motivate. Um, and also to how you talk to yourself, you know, sometimes we can be our biggest critic and be our biggest obstacle. You know, uh, it's, I'm, I'm a big positive energy kind of guy. Uh, I believe in juice. Let's go. Let's go. And uh, and that's that's really important. Uh, but as far as just kind of the, the, the skills that I feel like you need, it, it, it starts with you. And um, you just got to have a drive and an energy. I'm a big energy. Energy is really important. You know, you can walk in a room and, and feel it. You can feel people's energy. And, and I'm, I'm big on positive energy. Um, belief, confidence, and uh, I, I have a saying too, you know, when the lights are bright, you must perform. I mean, you got to step up. I mean, that's why you're in this position. That's why you're in this role. That's why you were such a successful coach and leader. When the lights were the brightest, you brought it and, and you got to bring it, you know, it's uh, BYOE, bring your own energy, man, because it's, it's, it's got to be starting with you and you got to bring it. So that's something that's very important too. When you start your day, um, I've heard you mention this before, what drives a lot of your energy is your gratitude. And you've been, you've been really, really blessed. You have a wonderful family. Talk a little bit about how important your family is and how it's an equalizer for you. Uh, you've got a doctor in the house, so you've got yeah. you to watch your mind, your mind yourself, right? Yeah. Tell, tell us a little bit about your family. <laughs> yeah, no, I've, I've, I've got a wonderful family. Uh, they, they allow me to do what I do. And, and my wife, it starts with Jessica. She's a dentist and uh, she's excited about the move out West. Um, but she's, uh, she's so helpful to me just as far as she can check me when, when, you know, they, the ego, you know, the ego can get right here and get big. You know, she said, Hey, you know what? You're not, you're not anything. And uh, she really helps me and keeps me balanced. And then I've got three beautiful girls. Uh, Scarlett is four. She turns five this month. Uh, Savannah is two, call her savvy, and uh, Serena is eight months old. So, um, you know, a lot of times we, it's tough. Times are hard right now. You know, everybody's feeling it some kind of way, uh, but it has been nice to kind of be around my girls. And, you know, when we start taking things so seriously and we think it's the end of the world every day with every crisis or uh, whatever happens, you know, it's nice to, to be able to play with with the girls and you know they have no idea you know and, and they just want dad and um they just want to play you know so um i get energy i draw energy from from them and, and perspective uh because you know um you 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 never to me you never find that work-life balance uh, i don't really subscribe to that i think you got to find a harmony and you got to find there are different moments in time where this has got to be here this is here and you gotta you gotta know when the harmony to to balance that out, and that's what I try to do. But but uh, they're they're great, and um, we're excited to get out west. And uh, we told our girls that um, you know California has an ocean, and LA has an ocean, and so they're they're excited. They're excited. They want to pull though. They want to pull. They're pushing hard. 
Yeah, well, you know, you can get a little bit of the ocean, you get the pool, and then you can go a little bit east, and you can get the snow. So we, we kind of have it all out there. Uh, I, I, I can't wait. We can't wait to meet all of them. It's just going to be terrific. Um, let's talk about our current, you know, it's an amazing time. It's a, it's a sad time in one sense that our, our world is sick and, and our country's angry, right? Yeah. With all yeah. of the systemic racism that we see out there and how wonderful it's going to be that UCLA can be a voice in how to navigate um, these conversations that are uncomfortable. And to share with everybody like what you did immediately when you had made that announcement around just getting out to vote. Talk, talk a little bit about how you shared this whole message immediately. It was like hours into your job. Uh, it sent a message, I know, through the coaches and, and uh, what you were all about. Share, share with us a little bit about that and the importance of it. Yeah, you know, uh, it was one of those things that I remember that weekend, a lot of people were coming out with statements and um, different things. And, and I, I didn't because I really needed to process what was going on. And, and, it, and it really struck me, um, not so much um, the actual things that were happening in the country, but people's reaction to it. It, 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 was, it just struck a chord. And I remember I had a conversation with one of our student athletes, and, and this might've been one of the first calls I made you know, after I was coming on board. And uh, one of the student athletes said, you know, uh, we're barrier breakers. You know, UCLA, we're leaders in this. Like, this is not sitting in the back of the class and hang out with my hat turned backwards, chilling. Like, no, we're going to be in the front. We should be in the front. We need to be in the front. And, and I was just blown away. And so it made me kind of step my game up. And I said, you know, what, what can I do? How can I help? What, what does this look like? And it just, over the weekend, I just... So I think it was like Sunday night. I called the team for our early Monday morning. I said, look, we got we to gotta help our young people affect change. And, and, we, and it's not just about voting. It's registration. It's understanding who the politicians are, what the issues are. Educate yourself. Education is key. That leads to action. That leads to impact. And I said, this is what we're going to do. And for me, like I said, I, don't, I didn't know the staff. I don't know the coaches. Um, I called a few uh, staff members and coaches to say, hey, this is something I want to do. What do you think? And, and I'm grateful. They were like, yeah, that makes sense. And, and what I kind of said was like, we're doing this like now. Like, I'm not waiting. Like, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Because I felt it was important to show our student athletes that we're going to help you do what you do. You know, I'm not going to stand in the way. If anything, I'm going to try to make this road and this path easier for you to shine and do what you do and affect change because it needs to be now. You know, that's part of why we're here. People always say, wait, wait. No, we're not going to wait. You know, this is, it's, it's never good to wait to do the right thing. And so I just jumped in and, and said, look, we're going to do the Voting Matters Initiative. And this is what it's going to look like. And my team was so great that, that they, knew the partnerships on campus that we could partner and, and really bring it together. Um, and then we were one of the first, we might've been the first school to announce that we were doing something, um, an initiative. And then we had a couple of California schools contact us. Um, Pitt, I know, did something just like us. And, and so it was cool when we were getting calls like, hey, what are you guys doing? Um, I loved it because we came together so quickly for something that's very important to our students. And, um, you know, I'm a servant leader. I serve. Uh, and that's, that's what it was about for me. And uh, it just felt right. And I wanted to do something. And so I said, let's go. And don't you feel like the, in the past, we've always worked so hard to, to be our best on the field, to be good students. And that was really, the, that's been the narrative the last 50 years. You know, I've been in sport over 40. That's the narrative. It seems to me, Martin, the future is... And I'm also an ambassador for diversity and inclusion and all of these equity and all of these things that make a complete person. Our athletics, our student athletes can now be messengers to that. I, I think that's where it's gonna get exciting. As difficult as your job is, because you have business, uh -huh. you, gotta, you gotta win in the big sports, but at the end of the day, 
if we just always take care of the student athlete and teach them how to be a great educator in all areas, I think everybody wins. Share with us how philosophically on a day-to-day -day basis, how you balance, we got to put ourselves in a position from, from a television standpoint. And then also we are UCLA, let's create a new path where the student athlete is an ambassador of excellence and not just championships? So great question. Great question. Um, you, you know, it, it starts with what's our mission, you know, and, and it starts with serving our students. And uh, for me, it's about being elite. Okay. And, and what does that mean? What does that entail? Uh, so the way I, I try to look at it is, uh, you know, every day, what are we doing uh, to help our young people grow and develop and, and make no mistake, you know, we're in the talent acquisition business. So, so for me, recruiting is everything. We all recruit every day. The alums that are on this call, you recruit. Because when you talk about UCLA um, at the water cooler, at your office, that makes people excited or, or more interested. Maybe they have a high school student or, or middle school that becomes interested in UCLA. We all recruit. And if we can all have that mindset that, that, we need to do everything we can to put UCLA in the best light possible to recruit, attract talent, develop that talent, um, and, and allow it to grow and blossom, we're going to be fine. And that's what it comes down to. So for me, it's, 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 it's really simple. You can't be your best um, in anything you do unless you're comfortable. Um, and I like to say mind right, game right. You know, the game ain't going to go the way unless, unless this is, is right first. And so that's what gets into, you know, they're more than student athletes, more than a Bruin. You know, it, it's, it's, a, it's a 360 view of how we develop and how we enrich their lives. And so that's, that's really important. That's what it's about. You know, it's, uh, sometimes we can make things a little too complicated. Uh, to me, it's, it's about the people. And, and this is a people business. And, and you treat people right, you try to do the best you can. Of course, we've got business, there's real issues that we got. That's, that's a reality. But I'm very, I, I try to be as transparent and as straight up as I can and say, hey, here's the deal. You know, I told our head coach in the first meeting, I'm not gonna be able to talk to many of you that much because I got this, this, and this on my plate right now that needs my attention. Doesn't mean I don't love you, I love you. I appreciate you and I, I can't wait to get to know you, but right now I got some business items that I got to take care of that, that were kind of, um, you know, come to the forefront and, and that's the reality. So you do the best you can and, and at night you go to sleep and you rinse and repeat, you know, and again, it's that, it's that race with yourself, mind right, game right, and, and what are you doing up here to help you be the best that you can be? That's, that's what I try to do. You know, Martin, you've served on multiple committees influential in terms of being a policy changer um put your head around our coaching industry um personally i think it's antiquated we're not doing a good job of teaching volunteer coaches how to be great leaders we're not, it's an anecdotal industry where you you play ball you may be a volunteer then an assistant and there's really not a formal way to keep our coaches up to speed and that's a conflict because they get into big time athletics and they're measured on two things they're measured on winning and graduation this is an uncomfortable question in the sense that do you think you can see a change where we're going we're to start measuring the areas around culture we're going to measure how you're developing the student athletes as civic um ambassadors because as as, as I put my coaching hat on, you measure what you value, you value what you measure. And right now in big time athletics, it looks like our, our sport is only measuring wins. They got to make sure they graduate. So it's hard for the coach to navigate all these other things that we're bragging about. Talk about how great the future could look if we created a world where we started to reward coaches for taking care of the student athlete and enriching their culture. That's a great question. You know, it's funny, Sue, as, as you're asking that, I'm thinking I'm going to say things on this, on this Zoom that our coaches have not heard. So, it's, so just, just think about starting a That's new job. That's why we're here tonight. 
That's why we're here, Martin. Starting a new job, moving 3,000 miles across the country during a pandemic. And oh, by the way, the people that you're going to lock arms and work with every day, you may not meet them. You don't know when you're going to meet them. You know, the chancellor, my boss, I have not met him yet. I don't know when I'm going to meet him face to face. You know, just, just think about that. So as I'm, as I'm sitting here about to answer your question, I'm thinking this is going to be maybe the first time that some of our coaches hear me talk about this. Um, right. You know, what I measure is leadership and culture. Those are the two most important things to me. Uh, to me, it's a continuum. And again, I, I'm, I'm not that smart. I, I, I just try to make things as simple as I can. Leadership dictates the culture. The culture dictates your behaviors. Your everyday behaviors give you results. Leadership, culture, behaviors, results. Really simple. And so when you get the leadership right and the culture right, that's going to give you the behaviors that you influence and you expect that gives you results one way or the other. And so to me, uh, it's not just about wins. It's, it's about leadership. I mean, that's, that's who we are as, as coaches, as administrators, your leaders, how effective are you, right? That's what it comes down to in your culture. You know, you've got to provide an environment for, for people to thrive and to excel. And if you, and if you don't, you, you know, in this business, um, you know, you're not going to last. And uh, the one thing I can say to you also, I mean, you know, there's a reality. We have a scoreboard. You know, every, every game, we can look up there and see how, how well did we do, you know? This is something that's very measurable in our business. So make no mistake, that's important. You can't ignore that. That's a reality. Uh, but also there's some things that are, that are just as important, if not more important, because I don't care how much you win, if your leadership and culture is off, that's a problem and that's a challenge. And so I look at that continuum, the leadership, culture, behaviors, results, and that's how I measure. Mm, I love it. And you speak about the chancellor. You're going to love the chancellor and you're going <laughs> to really love his wife. She's awesome. So I, I love that. You know what? T tell us, um, we're one year down the road. COVID has started to be manageable. You got through year one. What do you want them to say about Martin Jarman? Year one. Uh, that's, a, that's a tough question. Um, <laughs> I don't know what I want them to say about me. I can, I can tell you what I want them to say about UCLA. Yes. We do things the right way. We don't take any we don't cut any corners but there's a lot of energy and momentum and winning and success uh their young people are excelling uh, that's what i want them to say but and, and, and ucla is cool it's cool it, it, i want to be there that's a place i like going i want to be there um you know get in now like that's that's kind of how i see it because everybody knows challenges but like we have so much opportunity we have mm -hmm. so much opportunity across the board in our programs um, there is no reason why we shouldn't be uh, when you talk about elite and you talk about one hand we're, we're on that one hand you know and and that's that's what i'm excited about because you know i didn't come here because of what we've been quite frankly and we've we've been great history great i didn't come for that i came for what we can be and what we're going to be that's how I see this. I see the opportunity. I see what we're going to become. And what we have to do is marry that rich history and tradition and build on that and move that into the future. And that's what I'm excited about. So I, I can't wait in a year's time, people are gonna say, wow, yes. Like, and it, and it takes time. I'm not gonna sit here and sell you a bill of goods and we're gonna do this and do that. What I will tell you is we're gonna do the work. We're gonna do the work. And, and this grit and this toughness, and you get your pail, your lunch pail, and you come and you bring it every day. That's the only way I know how to do it. I know we have talented coaches. I'm excited to work with them and our staff, um, but there's no substitute for the work, and that's what it's gonna be. Uh, it's just, um, it's inspiring to hear you. And uh, in a time where I know you're working those 18 hour days, uh, <laughs> one of the things that we're trying to do here in the uh, Transformative Coaching Academy is to really be better listeners and to learn from others. And from the day you entered into our Bruin Nation, 
you have been that. You're listening to her, trying to take everything in, being measured in making big decisions. And Martin, I just, in closing, I just want to say thank you for uh, saying, yeah, I'm in. Thank you for your commitment. Um, there's a word that I always use. It's called stubborn optimist. And I love your stubborn grit and I love your optimism. Um, please share with our Bruin family any closing thoughts that you would like to share before we let you go because it's already three hours ahead back there. <laughs> uh, I just want to share how excited I am uh, to, to be here and join the Bruin family and that we need everybody. You know, this is not, I, I, I had a conversation with a, a donor earlier today and I said, you know, um, he was telling me a lot of things that, that we need to do. And I said, I'm one person, you know, we, we're only going to get to where we need to get with everybody, you know? And so I would, I would challenge everyone uh, as we're all going through a challenge in times, it's not going to always be this way. Uh, it's not going to always be this way. So, so, so let's get our mind around what do we want to become? Where do we want to go? And how can I help us get there? And when I say, how can I, I'm talking about all of us help us, UCLA, our brewing bubble, get where we where we need to go, you know, and and that's what that's what I would challenge everybody to think about. But but I'm excited. Um, I can tell you one thing for sure: um, we are elite, and and we're gonna work every day to bring it and make everybody proud, our alumni proud, our faculty and staff, and our students proud of the program that we have. And um, I'm excited to be a steward of this program and. Just can't wait to, to get going and, and, uh, and get there. So I appreciate the time, Coach. This has been a, a blessing for me to just kind of meet you and, and do these kind of things with you. Hopefully we can do this again at some point. And, um, you know, for, for everybody out there, just uh, support, be positive. We'll get it through, see it through. Uh, grit, toughness, that's the only way. Yeah, I appreciate it. And we're excited to have you and your family. We're going to be there through thick and thin. And as Pop always said, he loved it when it was tough because that reveals people's character. Um, we are proud to have a man of such character in our program. Uh, congratulations. Welcome. And uh, look forward to our next conversations. Thanks, Martin. Fours up. Thank you. Fours up. There we go, baby. <laughs> Good night, everybody.